Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Eric Corum, founder of AIM7. Welcome back to The Blueprint, where we distill cutting-edge science, leadership, and life skills into simple tactics optimized for your busy lifestyle and goals. If you want to be elite, you are going to be alone. That's what makes somebody elite. It's the nature of being one of the few who climb to the top of the mountain. And it is an isolating experience. I know a lot of you right now are pursuing very difficult things. And you know what I'm talking about. That's why I have my longtime friend, executive coach and seasoned entrepreneur, Andy Elwood here to share how to navigate key relationships with grace when your ambitions take you further down the road less traveled. Andy reveals how to have gratitude for people who join just part of your journey, respectfully moving forward when paths diverge, and to keep loose ties for future mutually beneficial bonds. I'll also share with you an insider story from my time at Nike that really changed my life. But before we get started, take a minute and please check out Andy's newsletter, Make Room. I absolutely love this newsletter. It's full of sage wisdom. He covers topics like curiosity, accountability, and community. It's just fantastic. So check it out. The link is in the show notes. Now to my conversation with Andy. So let's lean in and learn from the best. Andy, a number of years ago, I was working with Nike. So I was on their performance council for about five years, and I got to be a part of this closed door meeting with somebody that's impacted, I would say, tens of millions of lives, if not hundreds of millions, probably hundreds of millions. His name is Tinker Hatfield. And Tinker Hatfield is the one that created the Jordans. He is the one that created the iconic Jordan shoes. And he was talking about the creative process. And it was one of the most impactful things I've ever seen in my life. He showed us the shocks, like the early shocks, like this crazy mock-up. I mean, it was just wild. And he said something that like, I've never heard anybody else ever say and articulate this way. He said, if you want to be elite or excellent, be prepared to be alone. And I'd never heard somebody say and articulate a feeling that I had felt my entire life. Because in sports, I was always innovating and that put me and I was always swimming upstream and a lot of people didn't like that. And when you're a disruptor in technology or a disruptor in anything, you can be put into a, you know, kind of a corner. So pursuing excellence comes at a cost. It comes with a cost of loneliness. And I know you've experienced this and I'd love to get your thoughts on how we can work through this and how to be more successful in these isolating situations. It's something that I truthfully is a part of my daily life. As an executive coach, I am working with clients and teams that are doing things that no one else has ever done. And they are making it up as they go, relying on past experiences, relying on things that they have pointed them in this direction. But each step, in a lot of cases, is the first time someone's taken that step. And when you're putting your foot out into a space that doesn't have a well-worn path, there's some nerves about that. And at a certain point, a lot of people say, hey, hey, this has been great, but this is as far as I go. And I've experienced that with friendships. I've experienced that with really close relationships. I've experienced that professionally on multiple different times at multiple different stages of my career. And each time that I say, well, I'm going to keep going, the thing that I try and do, and I don't always, but the thing I try and do is have gratitude for the people who came with me that far. Just because I'm choosing to continue going doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with what they did or what the choices that they're making for themselves. And I think the thing that I think about is if you run your race, run your race, if you see somebody running alongside you, run with them for a time, as long as it doesn't slow you down from your path, as long as it doesn't deviate you from your path. Because there's times where our paths will intersect with somebody and we'll be running for at least a couple blocks together, maybe longer. But when it's time for them to turn right, and it's time for you to continue straight, say, hey, thanks so much for the run. I hope you have a great rest of your journey too. Mm-hmm. Because you never know when that person may come back into your path. For example, you and I knew each other 20 years ago in college. And there was a period of 10 plus years where you were running your race and I was running mine. And we were friendly and it was a loose connection. It was like great to see you back in Dallas over the holidays. But it really wasn't until you jumped into being a full-speed startup founder that our paths came back and we realized, wow, we both run with a certain level of excellence at a certain speed. And we've been able to run together over the past three years because of that. 
And those are the types of things that you always want to leave yourself open to. You don't have to burn bridges. You don't have to say, well, you're not as excellent as me because you never know. Life's long. There's going to be times when other people are going to come back into your life for a period of time to be able to help you launch a world-changing company. <laughs> and that's the type of thing that makes me really, really excited about having loose connections. And I think that's a you know an important phrase to really kind of think through is if they're not somebody you're talking to on a weekly or monthly basis, but if they saw your name come up on their phone, they'd smile. Mm. Those are the types of connections that you can develop on your path to excellence, but you have to be willing to move forward from people who are currently a part of your life or were previously a part of your life if they're not encouraging you to go further and faster. Not because they're wrong, but because you have to be committed to your path first, and then you can look to look to your left and right and see if anybody's still running with you. That makes so much sense. And when you and I kind of circled back, part of it was I told my brother, I was like, hey, you know, I'm going to do this thing. He's like, well, you know who you need to talk to. And uh, he was like, you need to call Andy. So I called you. <laughs> you immediately were like, yeah, I mean, looking back, I still have a lot to learn, but I really knew absolutely nothing. <laughs> and now that I look back on it, you treated me with such kindness and didn't make me feel stupid. And I look back at the first VC that we talked to together. I'm like, those I, yeah. I probably could have closed that deal if I hadn't <laughs> have done these 15 stupid things. And you didn't chastise me for it. That's a great coach, by the way. And you are an excellent coach. You're an executive coach. You do a wonderful job of it, too. But another thing, too, I would say is on the flip side is when you know somebody's doing something that's very difficult, be a great friend and you may, may need to modulate your expectations of them. Yeah. So when I was uh, in sports, six months out of the year, I would disappear and we would get one weekend off between late July and January, February, whatever. And then you would hop back into people's lives. Sometimes depending when I was in the NFL, I didn't go to church. I had to do church on the road. People never made me feel bad about that. Now, maybe it was because there's some glamour in sports, but there's going to be periods of time where your friends are going to be going through things yeah. and maybe they're pursuing that thing. Try to reach out, try to be that person because those people need you. Yeah. So I see it as a two way street. One is, is if you're going through the thing and then if somebody else is going through the thing and you can see it and yep. we need to play a role in that. Yeah. The thing that I will say about excellence is it attracts other people who are excellent. That real recognizes real. That when you see somebody trying to do the hard thing, if you have done the hard thing, you're able to show some respect and maybe even more grace than if you have never done the hard thing. You will never get haters who are further down the road than you. Hmm. Haters only shout from behind. Anybody further down the road that you're trying to, to run down is cheering you on because they want you to get as far as they've gotten. They want to see you have the success that they've achieved. Because at a certain point, that's what we're all trying to do, is we're all trying to see everybody become the best of themselves. And if you are a little bit further down the line and you can cheer somebody on, hey, come on, the water's great. It's so rewarding to be able to not try to sell somebody a course, not make them take your seminar, not write a book and say the seven secrets to your success, but to actually cheer for and viscerally sometimes get in the mud with people and help them through the really tough parts, whether it's through a kind one-time interaction or through actually stepping in and taking a, a more on-purpose role as a coach or a mentor or just a friendly advisor. There are different people in my life that I know, I know I'm on their calendar. They would never say it, but I know I'm on their calendar because it's about every three to four months. Quick note, just want to let you know I'm thinking about you. Hope, mm. hope things are continuing to go well. And there's no expectation that I ever respond. They would do it whether I respond or not. Because that's the thing that sometimes is challenging about that friend who wants to be in your life is that if you don't respond, they get butthurt over it. They're like, well, you just quit responding to me. It's like, no, 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 no. I promise you're not the only one. Lots of people didn't hear from me for that time. Because life is not about being in balance. I think one of your recent guests talked about this. Yeah. Right. It's about having an integration between when you're on the bleeding edge and when you're recovering and being able to be fully present in both of those situations and be kind to everyone in both of those situations mm -hmm. is what attracts people to want to see you succeed. It attracts people to want to cheer for you as you get further down the line. 
to be the one who makes that jump that others didn't, to be the one who went a little bit further and said, hey, no, come on, guys, we can do this. And sometimes it just takes that first person to get across the hump for other people to realize it's possible. The famous four-minute mile. Nobody could do it until it was done. And then everybody did it, right? That's sometimes what different humps in our lives look like. And we just need to be open to encouraging people that, hey, I'm not any different than you. I just made it a little bit further. And I think you can also. Before you leave today, smash that subscribe button on whichever listening platform you're joining us from so that you never miss another episode. I'll see you soon.